Welcome back to the 2020 Summit, Homeschooling Summit uh, this year. Uh, joining us again this year will be Pat Ferenga, and we've got a great interview for you. Um, I just want to ask Pat another quick question um, about putting our trust in children and what he thinks, um, you know, it, is that something we're doing wrong as homeschoolers? Is that, is that a trap that we keep falling into? Yes. It, the trap is that we don't trust our children because, I mean, when I say that, we don't trust their learning. We may trust our children, but we don't trust that what, what we're enabling our children to do as unschoolers and homeschoolers is going to be enough. You know, we doubt it. Um, but you have to take this leap of faith that, you know, if I don't have a bunch of standardized tests and uh, uh, an array of teachers looking at my, my child, that they're still going to learn. And we have to trust this process because your children were learning before they became school age. There's no doubt about it. You know, look at how, you know, how beautifully uh, created we are to learn from the minute we're born. Every child learns their native language, their mother tongue. You know, uh, as my friend Ivan Illich put it, though, how we think we have to teach the mother tongue. I mean, you know, that always blew me away, just that little phrase, you know, just got me. It's like, yeah, children come up, they learn, and they learn to walk, talk, socialize, calculate, identify their colors. Yes. But all of a sudden, we lose that trust, you know, when they go to school because, well, you know, Annabelle is reading, but John isn't, you know, and then we get into these comparisons and it becomes this competitive thing for grades and, and it all gets confused. But then when we take them home and we take them out of that, we lose that trust. We, 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 we gain these doubts overcome us. You know, we feel like, oh, goodness, you know, my child couldn't add, couldn't, couldn't add uh, just 10 plus 15 and a half properly. Um, they, you know, and it's just like, well, that's okay. They could make the same mistake in school. <laughs> Teacher would roll with it, you know, so can you. And we have to trust that everyone's learning is going to follow a different path. I have had three daughters, and all three of them learned differently. I mean, real quickly, reading. I think I've, I've mentioned this one often, but our, my oldest daughter learned to read exactly on schedule by third grade using flashcards, which my wife created using post-it notes. You know, we didn't spend a lot of money on anything like that. Uh, we actually just read to them a lot. Our middle daughter, she had meningitis as a young child, so uh, speaking, she had a, a speaking issue, um, and so the, the whole idea of phonics never really worked for her, but the sight, the sight and say method worked. Like, she would see signs like exit, stop, and so, and she started to associate them, and then the Harry Potter books completely kicked her into another gear, and she read all of them and is now a very avid reader. But that's how she learned to read. And she learned to read a little later than Lauren as a result of that you know, delay. And then our youngest child, Audrey, she taught herself to read. When she was five, she was reading to herself. And my wife and I are like, how is that possible? It's because we would read to her, our daughters would read to her, but somehow it just happened. So I've seen this, this work out, you know, but we had to trust that each process was working. Yeah, and the way we trust it is, well, well they're still interested in, in books. They may not be reading avidly right now, but they're asking questions about words. They're, they're reading other stuff. It doesn't have to be books. It could be signs. It could be <laughs> Nintendo. You know, Allison loved The Legend of Zelda, and it didn't speak in those days. It was an N64 game. So all the words were printed at the bottom of the screen, and I had to read them to her because I like to play the game too. But, but uh, eventually I couldn't always be there for her and she pieced it together you know she started seeing these different words repeat themselves and she got it so you know there are many ways for this to happen not just the school way and that's what we have to trust and we ha and we have to you know, to wrap this up to use a phrase john hope used we can't the problem is we ourselves were not trusted to learn as children we have internalized 
all of our schooling, all of our parents saying, oh, you're not good at this, or you, you should be better at that. You should spend more time doing this. And you know what we realize as adults is the things that interested us are the things that stick with us and the things that don't interest us or help us in our lives. We forget no matter how important the school tells us or our parents told us it is. So we have to trust that our children, you know, if, if we really believe that self-directed learning can work, you have to give yourself the patience and, and your, your children the time to let that happen. School works on a very, you know, compressed time schedule. You know, they have tests and curriculum that you got to just move everybody through. And everyone gets graded, including the teachers in the schools, the whole school system. You don't have to do that at home. You don't. You can just trust your children, trust the process, and you'd be surprised. Like when my daughter's reading, some are going to learn real quick, others are going to learn late. It's okay, as long as they all learn to read, you know? <laughs> Doesn't matter if they learn to read at six or 12, you know? In school it would, because a 12 year old just learning to read would be mocked horrendously. But in a home situation, you can protect them against that. And they will learn to read. I've seen it many, many times. And as I said, studies show boys tend to learn to read later than girls for some reason in a homeschool situation, but they all learn to read. Pat, that's, um, that's great insights. And um, I hope everybody tunes in to the full interview because uh, we get into some great uh, conversations as always. So uh, Pat, thanks again for your time. And thanks again for um, coming back to this year's summit. My pleasure. Thanks a lot, Daniel.